as we continue on our trading topic Tuesdays, man. Ooh, we just spin like it's it's crazy. Like we the kind of stuff we're going over, man. Our members are just getting all the goods. <laughs> I'm getting it too. All right, don't forget that. Like this is for me and Reed. We're still learning, hundred um, percent. Tonight's tonight's topic is about positive expectancy. So, whatever that um, that term is, and how it, where it plays a role in our trading. Why is it important? What does it influence? What does it affect? Uh, what just overall? What does positive expectancy mean? And why? Do we have to pay attention to it? So I'm going to go share my screen real quick right here. You guys see that? Yeah, yep. we could awesome. see it. Um, so I put that little meme. Uh, what's his, the real smart guy in that, that show, huh? I'm right all the uh, time. <laughs> what, is that, what is that show called? I forgot. Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. Oh, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, yeah. The smart guy, right all the time. Even if you, if this guy was to trade, I don't. I'm pretty sure he, he wouldn't yeah. do it as well. <laughs> no, nope. yeah, he's just too smart for the market, and he won't be able to withstand the drawdowns and being wrong multiple times more than right. You know, so um, positive expectancy. So we'll dive in into the ex the expectancy definition, the state of thinking or hoping that something especially something pleasant will happen or be the case so what that translates for me is like hey if i'm gonna get in the market i expect to win i expect to make some money right oh wait real quick yeah so that's that's and for a positive we put that word because yes you want to be positive um profit wise you don't want to be negative expectancy you don't want to expect the loss because that is the wrong way to approach it uh, we're all trying to grow our accounts here so we want to stay positive unrealistic versus realistic so expectations in the market right and as we go through our trading journeys we're gonna have all these different thoughts going through our mind running through like when i started got my heads in the clouds when having my first profit you know some some it could be dangerous some it could be a good thing because it'll just sway them away from the markets be like you know what i'm done with the markets i'm not even gonna touch it anymore save all that money right <laughs> then they go do something else they go to vegas <laughs> <laughs> and really gamble I <laughs> really gamble. Yeah. So on the realistic, like I uh, counting your profits before they happen. Um, like, yeah, I was just telling Reed this morning. I, w I had people, re a person reach out to me, uh, pitching me a unrealistic money, uh, a way of making money. I deposit to her a thousand dollars. She bring gives me back ten thousand dollars, and that right there just that thought i can see how it will lead a lot of people um of thinking of like oh yeah this is what i'm gonna buy with my 10 grand i'm going on vacation man you didn't even get it yet let alone um if that that whole idea even works right another unrealistic expectation is making a profit every day of the market for the rest of your life now yeah. That is a that's a big thing, and some of these concepts are hard to wrap your mind around and accept it. Yeah, making a profit every day, which leads to thinking that the market will do what you want it to do. It's like, hey, I want to the market to go up today. It's gonna go up, <laughs> only up. Double money in a few days and get rich quick. Get rich quick. Get rich tomorrow. Yesterday. Unrealistic expectation. First is a realistic expectation. Um, you might not be con uh, consistently profitable for months, even years when you first start out. You'll lose money indefinitely. You're going to be stressed. 
gonna be frustrated you might have your ego deflated the market will hum humble you and you might even want to quit did i miss anything reed do you want to add any realistic oh, no, yeah. <laughs> did i catch you oh man yeah you got it all man staying <laughs> humble the market will humble you I mean, I've had those thoughts where like, oh my goodness, I made 2%, a 2% on a million dollar account is $20,000. I just made $20,000. And you know, like then the mind just goes wild. So it's like, that's the market will be like, no, hold up, hold up, buddy. Here's three or four losses in a row. <laughs> yeah. Bring you back down. Just yank yeah. you out of the clouds, right? Yeah. Yank you. And so positive expectancy. Like, where does this play a role in trading? What does the positive expectancy affect? Does it affect your just your account capital? Does it affect you psychologically, performance, right? So, like, what, what do you what what's one thing that it affects, Reed? Like, as far as trading, what where does this play a role? Positive expectancy. When I think positive expectancy, um how it plays a role is it'll enhance your trading because when we're talking about positive expectancy, we're, we're quantifying this phrase. Like we're putting it into how many trades it takes to equal profit. That's essentially what positive expectancy means in real trading. Uh, we just covered the like unrealistic, realistic um, examples, but when we talk about positive expectancy, it's an actual, it's actually a trader's term to find profit in your trading. That's, it helps you refine. That's how it refine, right? Yeah. 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 Just to add to that, um, it, it, it just kind of helps you set the expectation for, uh, how you're gonna be in the markets? Well, you're you're gonna put this trade in. Where does it fall in your model or your performance that you expect? Like, say my strategy is a fifty percent win rate. So when I place this trade, there's a good chance, fifty percent chance I'm gonna win or lose. And so, I'm because I already set that expectation. I will be okay if I lose, right? Rather than people, they're like, they grip their last few hundred dollars and they just throw it in the on the the blackjack table. They're be, they're gonna be their their mindset is already skewed, and of course they're gonna want to expect to win. When really, what if the dealer is already been dealing? Uh, was was already dealing s solid hands and is on the downside of dealing bad hands yeah and so that just screws up your positive expectancy um so like what is it what does it mean to you Reed? like on top of anything from whatever you just said like if you just sum it up sum it up <laughs> some some oh shoot <laughs> now, let me pull up a document real quick yeah so I, when i google positive expectancy earlier today it basically says you the sum of your winners and your losers quantified should equal positive returns that's to hmm. really sum up the basics of positive expectancy 100%. 100%. And we were discussing this prior to the uh, to tonight. And what came to mind when this this whole idea is it's just profits, dude, like, overall, profits. your goal is to make profit. Yeah. And profits. you want you want you you want you um, to be able to go through your trading, take take the losses because you cannot avoid them and still come out positive with profits and essentially that's what i'll boil it down to in the markets you want whatever model your approach is going to be you want to be profitable at the end of the day end of the week or or quarter um 
you want to be profitable. And so I just want to share this, uh, this quote that we have. If you don't have an edge, all the money management and discipline will do for you is to guarantee that you'll gradually bleed to death. Incidentally, if you don't know what your edge is, you don't have one. And so yes. the edge, the edge is your positive expectancy. The edge is your way that you identified in the markets for you to uh, make money, you know, have a positive trading strategy that over time you will be profitable. And so this is just a practical application of like how to okay i get the idea glenn how do we apply it you know how do we uh take it and then let me see let me go to work on it so there's a few steps we listed down Re, you want to talk about the first step yeah absolutely so getting stats and data is a very mm -hmm. like direct way to gather an edge if you don't know what it edge your edge is yet or if you don't know what type of strategy is gathering this data will help formulate that that edge so you could have a successful trading strategy like 38 percent win rate and that's exactly my win rate currently is 38 percent when you have a 38 percent win rate you could still come up on top when you have a positive risk to reward ratio so like a three to one or 1.5 to one risking one to obtain 1.5%. And it all comes down to handling the losses. So how many losses can we handle mentally as far as our trading plan or how much can we expect to see with our trading style and still come out on top and before I see a winner? So I'll go off of an example it is back in 2019, 2018, I had three months where I dealt 16 losses in a row. Um, I call them in a row, but it was like break even or loss. So it's not winning anything. So it's 16, 17, 16. It was insane. And it, it was a psychologically, um, it was heavy on me. But I knew my positive expectancy was that, and I only knew this after the fact. I thought I was in some, some type of slump. Maybe I was looking back, but I looked back at it analytically and through the data and said, okay, so I had to go through 16 losses to get four straight wins. And the probability as uh, Mark Douglas says, like it's all a game of probabilities. And the only way you'll know your probability is through data and data gathering. And that's back testing and that's looking at your journal. So when you back test and you get through this journal, you will finally get the the analytics and the data to answer these questions to help you. Can you pull that screen up again? My bad. Oh yeah, no, no. let me the, um, let me share the screen. Yeah, there. yeah, the positive expectancy. Yeah, right that's here. essentially what we're getting at. And like, yeah, so like before you see a winner, that's the key thing. Is like, like my strategy at the time was I had to go through sixteen losses to get. Oh, this is what I was saying. So the probabilities is I could have had sixteen straight winners, and then four massive losses so it could always be flipped because you know if you it's just a it's a what is it called you're not really flipping a coin but if i had a 38 percent win rate it could have i could have had a, a reverse win rate as well if i just went the exact opposite direction so it comes down to what probability you have in the market and that's obviously that was my my weak probability but it's got some better sense <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah. I could imagine 16 losses before you start seeing winners, man. It does a lot to you. Where is yeah, you down, definitely. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, like, um, moving on to the second point is, can your approach be refined? This comes off of the last point we just left off of. It's like, yeah, I didn't have to go through 16 losses. And I only knew that after reviewing my journals and seeing where I could improve. So that just came down to, you know, trading off of emotions that came off to revenge trading, over trading. So I just kind of stopped trading and set my, at the time I set a limit of only 10 trades all month, no matter how many 
um, uh, what is it called? Um, setups that I saw line up in the market. I capped it at 10 trades only because I didn't want to have the same. I didn't want to go through 16 losses. I'd rather go through 10 straight losses than 16, you know? So I set my cap there. And that's just an example of how, um, I refined my approach to the markets. Um, yeah. Did you, uh, how about you, Glenn? Do you have you had any experience with, um, refining your process or, um, seeing how many losses you need to take before getting a winner. That's Your experience good. with positive expectancy. Right. Right. Um, like what, just to reiterate or add what you already said, um, as I was defining my approach, um, and building it, of course I needed data. And in order for me to get data on myself, I needed to be active in the markets, whether it be demo trading or live trading. I need some statistics on what I do, how I perform during market conditions, all my mistakes. I needed to track that some way, somehow. So I kind of just going back to the journaling, like as long as I documented something, I can I have something to look back and then I go pull up a chart go through it and I do this to this day um not as as frequent but at the same time I still need to track like okay am I still following my strategy am I cuz I am the human error right when I'm executing the trades I will I will still tend to mess up I will bend my own rules because I'm simply human I'm flawed but that's that's an indication that's a point to somewhat improve for myself um as far as refining your approach there's only so much you can do in the back testing or the reviewing of the trades right compared to live markets so i'll get to a point where i'm like okay the system is is not gonna be perfect we won't reach perfect right we cannot hit we can't expect to create a system or find a system that will tr win 10 out of 10 times on every trade with max amount of profitability right um i've heard a big hedge fund manager they they're in london big cta firm billions under management he said if we can f figure out a system with over a little bit over 50 percent win rate with the three to one risk uh, to win ratio they will have all the money in the world that's exactly what i said and so that's coming from that guy who has quants under him they manage billions if he's saying we got to reach 50 percent and just have a three to one we'll be golden so that that kind of be like you know what we're not too far off with our third 30 percent win rate with a small you know a little bit less risk to uh r and r ratio right risk return to risk ratio so <laughs> that's just something i want to point out like you don't want to try try to be perfect you want to just be like how do i get one percent better if i lost if i lose seven out of ten times with a 30 percent win rate is there a way i could win one more is there a way i can lose a little bit less because what does that do yes. it just brings up a your stats a little it, it makes it more positive right and so the, we're going to the last point of just coming to a conclusion how your strategy should perform during recent conditions whether it's light low volatility high volatility lots of action in the in the markets you got to learn how to build confidence in your system your strategy where performance will change with the market conditions as it should just plain and simple right market is moving crazy your account volatility your balance your equity curve may be crazy too right but and if you don't want that then you can just hop into some of those um, really, really slow mutual funds who will never move. They'll move like 1% or 2%. Yo, you know what? Just put your money in the bank, dude. That won't move. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Inflation will get you. Yeah. 
So just adding on to the the last part of practic um, applying this practically, this positive expectancy. Like I was mentioning, how do I improve the strategy to win one more trade out of the ten? How do you increase your winnings? So re I think we kind of chatted about it. How like is it better for you to just hit your target profit compared to letting it run? Right, those are two things that we yeah. you kind of um, went over, and you 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 did the stats, you did the homework, so like you do, had an answer to it, right? And yeah. so same thing, can you lower the risk no, uh, per trade knowing the statistics? So it all goes back to what your performance is. Uh, we may have similar um, results and and stuff uh ways to improve it but at the end of the day it's it's you seeing how you can improve upon yourself um going for that positive expectancy going for that extra one percent more right not for that necessarily that home run i like what you said man is to improve one percent like that's the goal in life just to improve one percent every single day and in your trading Yes, yes, yes. And I, I um, right before this call, I was just doing a little bit of research. Let me go share my screen. So well, let me try zoom in a little bit. I put together this little spreadsheet of um, I was tracking the NASDAQ from 2019 to 2020. Ten trades. I did a simple entry uh, strategy and so this strategy over from 2019 all the way until currently out of 10 entries i got a positive expectancy or a win rate of 60 percent so i would lose four times win, win the rest um you can see it's balanced between long and short and then here are the losses in ticks Right, so over ten trades, I'm positive sixteen thousand ticks or pips. You would say in the forex market, I do have losers. You'll see here minus one thousand fifty six, minus three thousand sixty four ticks, and you know the winners will cover that. So seventy seven hundred ticks on the winner. So at the end of the day, you do the average, and this is just some home like you can do this if any chart if you just have a simple strategy a, a strategy you, you do you, you point out it took me 25 minutes to put this together i just did a daily chart and i just did okay entry exit entry exit okay win or loss okay loss okay boom 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 and then i just did the math of like how many contracts if i scaled up but essentially this system has a positive expectancy rate because over time I'm profitable. And so, um, of course, it's in hindsight, previous um, past market da uh, data won't always apply. But what it did right there is just fortify what we're doing here. You know, it built confidence and it brought me back to okay stick to the system that's it dude yeah, yeah. and you got your positive expectancy <laughs> let it let the system take care of itself yeah follow the plan yeah so you got those stats following your plan correct yeah yeah awesome and that this is a lot um like like i said 10 10 entries over almost uh two years so it's very wow you know, very small trading yeah small trading right so the lo the, the holding periods are a little bit longer but yeah um that could totally if, if you if if it's a lifestyle if you don't want to be glued to the screens that's a possibility you could do right there 10 trades over two years and still come out very positive very positive depending on your yeah your wrist size right yeah 
That's nice. That's awesome. Good stuff. Questions, Charles? Anything? Any comments? Anything stood out to you? Uh, no, I mean, that's good stuff. I like that um, you actually just use the daily chart and kind of like the swing trade type of, uh, you know, approach so that even if you're doing this every day, you can still make money better than any bank account out there <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Saving CDs. Yeah, it, it's not, it's not um, rocket science as they would say. Um, regular people can do this, but it's just while you're in it, in the trades, you know that's where you gotta, you could easily fall off the track. So you'd be like, oh, I'm just gonna take profit now because I see it, you know. Um, I've done that. I, you know, sometimes I do that. Depending, I'll do the manual. And that's something I can I gotta go I gotta work on, but um, at the end of the day, man, you gotta go trust your system, trust your rules, right? Stay disciplined, and know that you will be positive in the end over time. That is the goal. That's it. Dude. It's like we're not telling you go on Bitcoin tomorrow tonight and then freaking it's going a hundred grand by Tuesday, dude different different role <laughs> yeah not a get rich quick right you got to work for it yeah you got to do a little bit of work <laughs> a little bit just a little bit yeah you gotta get one of those uh those looms to actually be true for that to, to happen. Like, yeah take my ten thousand i'll take that million right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> sick man sick yeah, I mean, as far as as a, a topic that we were just talking about today, that that kind of sums up the positive expectancy. Um, those are practical questions every everyone can take and re revisit over time. It's like a performance check, right? So yeah, like that um, chart I was showing. So right here, this is it. Like I zoomed out three years or. What is this? The uh, 2018. Okay, so yeah, beginning of 2019. Um, and this is what I broke down and this is what I did on the chart. And so if you're putting together a trading approach, like do this simple exercise, zoom out, and then be just, just spot. You can do this easier. Uh, there, there is the, the Trend Spider app where you can do that and put your, your trading entries and exits. And then they'll do it within seconds, right? Obviously, I like doing it with old school. <laughs> but, Manuel. Um, Manuel. Um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like that ties into the positive expectancy. It ties into refining your edge. Well, defining the edge first. Then you refine it, right? Okay. Then you got to go into, you break it down even more on be like, okay, um, what would be a good risk for me to continue? Do I just continue to risk my 1%? How many times will I get knocked out? How does 2% look like, right? And then you, you, you'll see how the gains, the profits work out afterwards, right? So first, because you cannot control the profits, but you can control your risk. So zoom out, find your edge, define it, refine it. Be like, okay, how do I get that 1% more? How much do I, I can, I can scale back my risk maybe, or add in, add more of my profits. Well, some bombs right there, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, spend some time when you can. I mean, just, just go do some, do some market research. Right, and it doesn't even matter. Like you can just focus on forex. You don't gotta look through all the stocks or futures, or whatever. Just find one you like. Make sure it's vol. Uh, it has liquidity. It moves actually. Let me see one that doesn't move. We cannot do a a. Uh... Let me see. Find one. 
There's weird ones that just does not move, and then you can't. I mean, actually, UJ, like I was told that, yeah, as a beginner, that's the best one to do. But it seems like that thing hardly moves. But when it does move, it just moves like crazy. Pound yen, you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that thing does move, and it has its um. It has its. It has its days, yeah. has its weeks and months. February, January, February. Oh, it's, bull, baby. It's very... Wow. Like, when I first saw that market, I was a little bit afraid of trading that thing, man. That thing moved, man. And then I noticed, like, if we focus on 4X, um, you got the GJ. That will, that will move. But if you want something a little bit slower, I think USD CAD and odd odd USD they kind of move a little bit like their 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 moves aren't as volatile. Would you agree, Reed? Like yeah, it's it takes time to set up it so you can interpret the market a lot easier. Yeah, more swings, more swings in the um. So on the left is a odd USD, on the right is is um, JG GJ, and yeah, if you zoom in, man, let's do four hour. There's gonna be way more swings for you to catch. And just remove all studies compared to this guy. This guy. This guy swings. Look at these these drops, these dips, right? And so means it just means more opportunity. Um, but if you're a long term trader, swing trader, you're gonna be entering, exiting way more because of these swings, unless your stops are way out. Compared to like the odd USD, like you're able to just roll with it because their their movements much smaller, less less volume, I believe. I don't know, but. Um, that's the two characteristics I notice at the yeah, end. Of each the pair day. has its own characteristics too. When you really right. dive into each pair, right? Um, Euro USD, that's solid one. Um, it'll pick up, it'll slow down. So, like you zoom out to like this this mo uh, October two thousand eighteen. It's just ugly and sideways, but it's not. It's not too. I mean, it's just very. That's ugly to trade. But you zoom out smaller. These are smaller moves, and then boom, you got the big swings, bigger swings up here. You know, it'll consolidate. So that one, you are Euro USD for me. I like uh, trading because I can identify the setups easier. Uh, it's cleaner, cleaner for me, personally. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, uh, not too mu much action in the market right now. It's just all the action happened in the last two days. So right now we're just in a corrective period. Market's developing into new patterns and new opportunities. Yeah, sitting and waiting, huh? Yeah. Just on the sidelines. Okay. Good to know. I'm just sitting and holding. Oh. <laughs> Cover cri crypto. Crypto. Oh, man. crypt. You... Oh, oh. Crap. How's crypto looking? Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> uh... Well, you got your trading view up, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you pull them up. Sure. Yeah. So, ADA, I closed about 90% of my positions in crypto. Um, this is my. ADA position. I got off in uh, through a descending channel in a bull run, so I just capped it right here after this heavy uh, pullback, and I'm just gonna wait for another re-entry. So I want to show you. This is the hour that I got in right here. There's a descending channel after a bull run, and then it just took off. I wish I got in here, but you know. Just, You're just not at the charts every time. You can't just, wish all for all of them. Just to, that? Do you, just to pause you, read, Like, yeah. 
if I was just jumping on and looking at the charts, they all look the same. Like the Euro USD looked the same as this. Like, do you know everything you need to know about Cardona? Cardona? I do not. <laughs> I do not. So like, all I know was this move happened because they updated their technology. But I didn't know that going into the market, I looked at this technical analysis completely. So I was like, oh, shoot, this is how you trade it. I mean, it's a chart. So it happens. Another one. Yeah. So anyway, so 80 I'm out of 80 I'm just going to let let it do its thing. If it continues on, it, then that's awesome. But yeah, Bitcoin also just closed my positions on Bitcoin. Uh, or I let the market close me out, I should say, uh, with stop losses. It's just FTMO. And then it pulled back and took me out. Um, just waiting for a more, more clear cut price action and then finally ethereum for the big boys ethereum is just hovering around this 3200 level but glenn i think you are you got in a good level with ethereum right yeah 3, i'm gonna show your screen let me go i give me a couple seconds to go pull it up but um so a lot of these um so this i only learned after reading a uh, crypto uh, the legacy coin is Bitcoin. So it's kind of running on quote unquote older blockchain technology. But I know that they're updating their algorithms and stuff or the blockchain is upgrading too. But the reason why a lot of these um, charts just moved is because there's like series and phases of um, like Cordana, for example, or ADA. They have like development procedures. So they cross into basically their second phase of development uh, of updates. And the people loved it. And it it's working well for um, you know third-party apps. And that's why you see that giant bull run that's happening right now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so this is Ethereum um, going back to May 12th. 2021 we peaked at 4400 so if you zoom out oh no it does i don't have data for that so 4400 and in big drop um because whatever the reason i don't know what the reason was but you notice that in a lot of these markets they hit a new high and then they'll react they'll bounce back to their previous low or whatever level um, or it could be fundamental news. I don't know what the news was, but it was pretty nasty, right? And then we all knew, we're like, okay, after that big drop, it's highly unlikely it's going to bounce right back up. It's going to immediately recover because this, all the diamond hand guys, they got demolished, maybe. <laughs> um, they, they had to go back to their jobs, right? <laughs> Dished out their home savings. Um, so this crazy just it just went side the you could see the volatility too the the size of the the bars they they were huge here and then they remain a bit bit big here so it's really it's like getting caught in um a big death trap if you try to trade these this particular area then the market calmed down Mar price just continued to go where it's want to go and it looks like we had some sort of support here at 1700 1799 and then market continued to go up and so 2913 or 2900 was a level for me particularly to i'm like okay i am officially bull biased market continued to peak up and then we had a nice pullback here at about 3,000, we had a close on the daily at 3,000. So I was like, okay, cool. I got my entry. I missed the first entry, but price is pulled back. It's being nice to me. It's handing in on a silver platter. I'm taking the opportunity. So I'm long here. Um, and of course, it started moving. And now we, we're at 32.17. I'm anticipating it is another pullback. I'm still holding it. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. So who knows if, if you're just going based on the chart, of course, everybody wants it to go to the moon, but that's NASA can't even go to the moon right now. All right. So <laughs> 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 makes you think these little things are going to go. Um, we'll see how it respects the, the previous levels, right? 4,100, right? The previous close 4,159. 
we'll see how it respects that there, there's a there's room here for it to go run again we just need something i don't know what the, the news is or whatever as technical traders you don't rely on that the news could be a catalyst right if you're already in the trade because you got a s legit entry and you're riding it then you're gonna want that good news sometimes you're gonna want that bad news it'll just be the catalyst to just move your your trade more in your favor and you just stick with it that's it you just let it roll let it grow oh bro i gotta Ooh, another one Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <clears throat> so that that's my move on ethereum um as you would see a lot of the cryptos they're they're crypto versus usd so they're all based on the us dollar um so dollar go down crypto goes up vice versa dollar goes up crypto goes down essentially that's what it is i don't i don't know anything about crypto blockchain yeah i think it's kind of like actually trying to avoid that like yeah the correlation they're trying to I mean, eventually, crypto will be its own market where it's not even correlated to any national currency. I seen some of the exchanges or, or brokers, they are slowly mixing the um, crypto. So like Bitcoin versus slash Ethereum or yeah, yeah. Slash ADA. So it's going to be against each other, which is that can be a little confusing in a way right it'll and i don't just be know like pairs though it'll be like pairs but i yeah. don't know if it's gonna be we still need the liquidity there we still need yeah a lot the 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 big big guys to move the markets because that's essentially who we're riding their coattails we need those guys to go make a big splash then we'll go follow so we'll yeah. wait on that that's what you want to when you whenever you're looking at what markets to trade trade the ones where there's a, a lot of money <laughs> essentially <laughs> yeah yeah one good trade he talks about stocks mike bill four he talks about trade the stock that's moving he's like whatever sector is you go into those stocks and you trade the sector that's moving so i mean almost could be said about crypto but we want to be careful where we don't want to trade the penny stock cryptos where it's like you know buy this doo doo coin and then it's gonna take <laughs> off you know like you want to be careful of all the new coins trade like glenn said you want to trade the established coins right but, right the yeah. ones that's still in like fractions of a sense man it's that for to me i translate as pure speculation they're all saying yeah. It's and then you're treating it like an IPO, right? Like that stock, you don't know how well that company's gonna do after it goes public, right? And then yeah. you got your friends telling you, "Oh, get into this coin," which is basically <laughs> air. <laughs> when a when your friend who doesn't trade or is not involved in any th market tells you to get into something, that's the biggest red flag you could imagine. <laughs> that's like almost saying, "Walk away from it now." Yeah, they approach you at the coffee maker, the water cooler, or on the golf course or whatever. <laughs> on your break. Yeah, the, golf, the golf course indicator. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it, the, golf course indicator. The golf course indicator is when your golfer friends who aren't traders, we don't. I don't golf personally, so I, I can't really relate to this, but it's when your golfer friends start talking to you about what stocks to buy and he, um, that's when you know to get out of that stock if you're in it. They're like, oh, so how's that position? I'm going to get into it because I heard this is happening. Everyone's buying it. When you hear everyone's buying it, that's when you red flags again. Like, okay, I'm going to close my position now. <laughs> 100%. 100%. That's good, man. That's good. Well, Not yeah. Gonna I, mean... lie. I, got, I got suckered into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like two of them, like, oh. I'm like, pull out, pull out now. So get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's learning too, though, right? It's a good yeah. indicator. Yeah. Yes, it's a good, yeah. that's real life testimonial right there. There you yeah, go. Exactly. Let's have to come to you guys. I need the real professional's <laughs> perspectives, bro. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I learned that story from a book. <laughs> so he he's like, you know, a hedge fund manager and he was he goes golfing and then he's talking. He got into this one really minor stock. It was like a dollar, um, a penny stock. He got into it and he wrote it like really high. And when the news and like his friends started talking about it, he's like, interesting. Close his positions. He said, yeah, he missed out on profit because it went up a little bit. But then he he got out because of the golf course indicator. He's like, yeah, it was just weird that my friends who don't trade started talk to me about it. And they're, you know, they're all millionaires, right? Doing this. So he's like, yeah, when my millionaire friends put that money in, I'm not going to, I'm getting out now. <laughs> Forget who it was specifically, but it's a good, That's great a good story. One. Just because he it's got a, a market wizard. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good one. But yeah, That's I mean, funny. Uh, I think there's a YouTube where uh, like CNBC or NBC is trying to tell you like buy high and sell low. And it's actually the opposite when um, like this, the stock is like overbought and they're telling you to, to buy it then versus selling it. I guess it's pretty funny. There's a couple of different ones for the final. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, like when I was in the Cardona trade, um, when I got in a, just earlier, purely based off technicals, Two days later, my friend messaged me. He's like, yo, Cardona's going off. You should get into it now. I'm like, oh, nah, word. <laughs> That's all I, I didn't, didn't want to be like, oh, yeah, I'm in it, blah, blah, blah. You know, I didn't want to be, be like that. But it's just, it's like, that's actually, I closed, I think I closed like a few percentage of my position. My first time I closed it because I went off the golf course indicator, man. <laughs> it's like, dude, this guy just told me Cardona's going off. I think I should heed the warning. Oh, that's and funny. then, yeah, when you hear it in the news, it's too late already. The position's too late. I mean, it'll again, it'll go up because of the hype, right? A lot of crypto stocks, anything, it'll go up because of the hype and everyone's talking about it, but it'll fall quickly. Like Glenn and I were talking about the other day, the market goes up. Uh, like you're going up a stairs that's how the market moves and when it moves down it collapses like an elevator so that's how generally that's how the markets move so we just want to want to don't want to ride the elevator down 100 percent, dude 100 percent. you'll see that in many markets uh no, no matter what like stocks futures forex crypto um they will just drop on a dimes notice and and you can kill it if you know how to go short if you're comfortable like just like read mr 70 percent short all the time <laughs> like 90 percent now man it, yeah then you can you can kick butt because you know you got speed on your on your side um the the market action and so there are lots of opportunities to be made be had on the short trades and when we say short you're selling you're selling it uh into a position and you're you hoping to sell uh to buy lower right you you're gonna sell put in a put a position to sell or order to sell and then what you're gonna do to exit is to buy low so you complete that whole transaction there um and yeah man like just just look at like i said look around look at the charts look at the different markets and just try to take note on how they move yeah um i know it's a, we're a little bit past eight o'clock guys i appreciate you guys making the time you guys are freaking awesome um i hope this was a value this will be recorded for you guys to always rewatch. um in case you missed something take the notes um like i said we already uploaded last week's risk management uh proud i think it was fire um and that's gonna help a lot of people. This, this is the one thing. The risk management last week was a big. When you look at um, a lot of people who are just like all excited about trading because they just found out about it, asking about risk management, they don't really know what to say. <laughs> They'll tell you which coin to buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's your stop level? At? What's a? I've literally had conversations for like, where, what's the stop loss? Like, what's a stop loss? And so that. Oh my God, my heart goes out for them. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> like, just close your position right now, and let's let's talk it over. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So you guys have an awesome night. Have a great rest of your week. Yeah.